A long time ago, when the world was new and the Anishinaabe were still learning how to walk the earth, the world was beautiful, the sky was always sunny, the game was plentiful, and life was easy for the Anishinaabe. But it was not always this way. Long before this, the Anishinaabe were a struggling people, and when nearly starving to death during the harsh winter, the maple tree took pity on the Anishinaabe and agreed to offer their syrup to any Anishinaabe that was in need. All maple trees knew this and had an agreement with the Anishinaabe that should they ever need food, they could break off the end of a branch and pouring out of the tree would be a delicious golden sweet maple syrup. Then one day, the trickster Nanabojo came to visit the Anishinaabe peoples. When they arrived at an Anishinaabe village, they looked all around, inside wigwams, at the smoke shack, down at the stream, in the fields, but Nana Bojo couldn't find anyone. Where did everyone go? said Nana Bojo. Nana Bojo was confused. The Anishinaabe are not in their wigwams. They are not in their smoke shack preparing fish. They are not down at the stream collecting water or catching any fish. They are not in the fields tending to their crops. After giving it some thought, Nana Bojo decided to set off into the woods in search of the Anishinaabe people. After walking for some time, Nana Bojo came across a maple grove next to their village and found the Anishinaabe laying on their backs at the base of the trees. What are you doing? yelled Nana Bojo. When Nana Bojo found the Anishinaabe laying on their backs, they had their mouths wide open and pouring into their mouths was brown, rich, delicious maple syrup. Nana Bojo thought to himself, how did the Anishinaabe come to be like this? This will simply not do. If they keep on like this, they're going to become fat and lazy. Nana Bojo decided to go down to the river and fill his bucket full of water. Carrying his big bucket of water back to the Anishinaabe people who are all pigging out on maple syrup, Nana Bojo began pouring the water into the maple trees. The Anishinaabe jumped up and said, Nana Bojo, Nana Bojo, what are you doing? Nana Bojo explained to the Anishinaabe that they had lost their way and were disrespecting their relationship with the maple tree by over-consuming their syrup. No longer will pure maple syrup flow out of the trees. Now if the Anishinaabe want to make maple syrup, they will have to work for it. They will need to boil it down slowly until it becomes maple syrup and even farther to become maple sugar. Then the Anishinaabe will value the maple syrup that Gijay Minado has gifted them and they will not become fat and lazy. From that day forward, the harvesting of maple syrup was only made available one time a year and the communities would have to come together and work as a community. It is maple syrup and maple sugar that would later become a delicacy and a staple part of our diets as Anishinaabe. When the winters get tough, we have Gijay Minado, Nana Bojo, and the spirit of the maple tree to thank for the syrup and sugar that has been stored from last year's harvest. Chimigwech for listening.